السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي بيده تتم الصالحات وأصلي وأسلم على الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه لا يوم الدين وبعد All praises belong to the Almighty Allah May his peace and blessings be upon the Prophet of Islam Muhammad sallallahu his household followers and all those who follow the path of Allah till the day of judgment welcome all of all of you to the morals of Ramadan day number seven I would like to look at the methods through which one can attain taqwa by the will and power of Allah the method in principality are six Method number one is reflection. And under reflection, we have reflection, reflection on Allah's power. And then B, reflection on man. Method number two is fasting itself. Method number three is reading and reflection on the Quran. Method number four it's performance of a nawafil that is vol voluntary prayers method number five is remembrance of allah and then method number six acts of charity let us start with reflection and under reflection we'll first look at reflection on allah's power in Islamic theology, the power of Allah is divided into three. The power to create, the power to protect, and the power to, to destroy. When it comes to the power to create, Quran chapter 1 clearly states, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That all praises belong to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. Meaning, we have more than one world. In Quran chapter 1, is mentioning worlds without necessarily indicating what they are. In Islamic theology or in the science of the interpretation of the Quran, we have about four major methods of interpreting the Quran. We have Quran interpreting itself, meaning a verse inter interpreting another verse. Then we have the interpretation of the Quran by the Sunnah of the Prophet. Interpretation of the Quran, that is number three, by followers of the Prophet. Then we have interpretation of the Quran by scholars of Islam. So in this particular instance, the plural is the worlds, Rabbil Alameen, Lord of the worlds, in plural. So what are the worlds? And in all this, I'm emphasizing on the power of Allah to create which is an aspect of his power. Quran chapter 22, verse 18, gives us an interpretation of the world, of the word, the plural of alim, which means the world, and the plural is al alamin, where, worlds, in plural. In principality, there are four worlds. And Quran chapter 22 verse 18 explains that for us. The book says, Alam tara anna allaha yasjudu lahu man fi samawati wa man fi al-ard. Haven't you seen that all the things in the heavens and earth prostrate in submission to Allah? 
then it begins to mention the creatures that submit to Allah in the universe. Then Allah states, number one, Ash-Shamsu Wal-Qamaru Wal-Nujumu Wal-Jibal That the sun, the moon, the stars, and mountains are prostrate in submission to Allah. These items belong to the world of things. So the first world is the world of things, including rainfall, the earth, and the rest. We call it, we call all of them the world of things. Then we have the second world, which has been indicated by the verse in Quran 22, verse 18. So Allah says, was shajaru, meaning plants. And then the third world, the verse continues, what the web and animals. And the last one, what kathirum minanas and human beings. So at this point, we have the world of things. We have the world of plants. We have the world of animals. And we have the world of man. But this arrangement in the Quran portrays a hierarchical miracle because each world is seven the one under it according to the arrangement in the Quran. So we have the world of things, the world of plants, the world of animals, and the world of man. When you have that hierarchical arrangement and you reflect upon our studies in science, it will be discovered that the world of things, which is made up of the sun, the moon, the stars, mountains, earth, rainfall, this world serves the world of plants. Because when you put a seed into the earth, it needs sunshine, it needs moonlight, it needs rays from the stars. It needs the earth, of course. It needs rainfall to germinate, to grow. And the world of plants serve the world of animals. And the world of animals serve the world of man. If you reflect further upon this arrangement, you will clearly see that cumulatively, all the worlds are seven man the world of things the world of animals the world of plants and the world of animals cumulatively are seven the world of man so the question then is who is man going to serve number two the power to protect Let me just give you one example in respect of Allah's power to protect. He protected his messengers and prophets and he continues to protect his believing servants till the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu that wallahu that I will protect you from the machinations of man. Quraysh had gotten peeved by the dawa message of the Prophet of Islam. The Prophet had made it clear to Quraysh that it is only Allah who has to be worshipped and not their idols. Quraysh got peeved and decided to destroy the messenger of Allah. And how were they going to do it? They conceived an idea and the idea was to drop a rock on the head of the prophet whenever he came 
to pray in the haram around the, where the Kaaba is. And he was in a state of prostration. So one of them would then drop a rock on his head. It has to be noted that anytime Quraysh met to plan against the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, one from the world of al-jinn from the satanic world of al-jinn will be part of the discussion of Quraysh in respect of how to handle the prophet of islam muhammad on this occasion they met the leadership of Quraysh met and the decision was to destroy the prophet by dropping a rock on his head when he came to pray and was in a state of sujood prostration abu jahl said i will take up that task so he was the prophet was in a state of sujood and abu jahl picked a rock his two hands were trembling meaning the rock was so heavy and this reminds me of one of the statements in motivational psychology it is said that when an objective that one wants to achieve in life is a very heavy one, you need heavy efforts to be able to accomplish that vision. Abu Jahl saw the killing of the Prophet as his most important ob objective. And therefore, the weight of the rock he was supposed to lift up and drop on the head of the messenger of Allah did not bother him at all. He lifted it up. His two hands were trembling. The whole of Quraysh had come to witness the end of the messenger of Allah. But you know, in the Quran, many places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that the infidels are planning and Allah has already planned and the plan of Allah is the one that is going to work. So the Prophet was in sujood. Then Abdul Abu, Abu Jahl lifted the rock up with his two hands trembling. The whole of Quraysh was there to witness that incident. And just out of the blue, Abu Jahl with his two hands trembling, dropped the rock and started running away. Allahu Akbar. Then the spectators asked him, what is the problem? And he shouted, Ra'aytu fahlan min al ibl that I saw a camel the size of which I had never seen in my life before. Allahu Akbar. Later, the Prophet of Islam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Abu Jahl, told Abu Bakr Siddiq that when Abu Jahl lifted the rock to drop it on the head of the Messenger of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the archangel in the form of a camel which had lifted its two frontal legs to hit the eyes of Abu Jahl. The spectators around who, was, who were watching the spectacle did not see the camel but Abu Jahl saw the camel so he dropped the rock and started running away. Allahu Akbar. I stated earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised to protect the message of Allah. Allah states, Wallahu ya'asimuka minan nas. The He Allah will protect you from the machinations of men. And it does not end there. I added that any servant of Allah who either through his wealth, through his energy, through his ingenuity, through any resource that Allah has given him, 
besides to use that resource to spread the word of Allah, will also enjoy this unique protection from Allah. We are in Ramadan and we will be praying, putting our heads to the foreground. We'll be lifting our palms to the skies, seeking Allah's intervention in everything that we do. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, to strengthen us to do his work because the essence of our life is to work for him and die for him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a reality in our lives. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.